Step number four of seven steps to quitting your job in one to three years, the launch, the next 60 days. And step number three, which is the pre-launch sequence, you develop your critical skills and increase your confidence level so that you're ready to contact brokers and investors without signing like a bloody newbie, okay? Now in this video, I'll be going over step number four, which is the launch step. It's more about action and less about outcome. What's most important in this step is consistent activity to create new habits and develop confidence. So stick around to the end where I go with the most important team members you should recruit. Hey, I'm Michael Blanc. I'm a full-time entrepreneur, investor, and coach. And I'm passionate about helping people become financially free in one to three years by investing in real estate. Through my investment company, Nighthawk Equity, I control over $300 million of real estate, and I've helped my students acquire over 14,000 units at the time of this recording. So hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. the three activities you should be doing each week. Activity number one is analyze and make offers. In order to continue building confidence and create a deal pipeline, you'll need to find and analyze deals. You might set a goal to do five deals per week, for example, which is just one a day. Adjust this to your number based on the time you have available. Obviously, the more, the better, because like any kind of real estate investing, this is a bit of a numbers game. Now remember, when I say analyze five deals, that includes making an informal 10-minute offer for each deal you analyze. So when I say analyze deals, it also implicitly implies that you're making an offer. Offer. This means you're getting back to the broker with something like, hey, the asking price won't work for me and here's why. And here's the price that would work. Is there any flexibility or maybe not? So in order for you to consistently complete this step each week, you're going to have to call brokers. Now we covered this in a previous step under secret number four, the number one way to find the best deals. So review that section if you need to. Remember that consistency and persistence are key. Activity number two, meet with potential investors. So in addition to analyzing deals to build a deal pipeline, you also want to build a pipeline of investors. Because if you can get verbal commitments from investors before you get a deal on a contract, you can make offers with confidence. We already outlined that process of finding, connecting with potential investors in secret number one, raise all the money you need to do your first deal. Now, classroom time is over. It's time to actually do it. So a reasonable goal is to meet with one potential investor per week. In order to have one meeting per week with a potential investor, you're going to need to create your mind map, contact 10 potential investors each week to schedule one meeting. Just like with the previous activity, consistency is key. Always contact and speak with potential investors. And then once that relationship is ready, ask them for a meeting to discuss potentially investing with you. But again, in this stage of the launch sequence, don't be too concerned about outcome. Talk and meet with anyone who will give your time of day, even if you know they have no money or maybe don't know other people, which is always never the case. Everybody knows someone. It's really about practicing and building confidence. So in this step, you just got to do it. Also, you need to hit that subscribe button and notification bell while you're at it as well, while it's still fresh in your mind. Activity number three, build your A-team. Okay, the third activity after analyzing deals and meeting with investors is to build your A-team. Long before you have your first deal on contract, you should have identified these other members of your team. Number one, and most importantly, is your property manager. Number two is your landlord tenant attorney. Number three is your real estate attorney you used to close with, SEC attorney for the actual legal side of the SEC part, and then your commercial lenders and brokers, possibly a property inspector, appraiser, insurance agent, etc. So your success as an apartment building investor depends on the strength of your team. So don't cut corners here. Don't skip the step and build the best team now while you can still do it and before you have a first deal in place. I found that the best way to find good team members is through referrals. Yes, you can Google on the internet or go to the apartment association website, but I like referrals better than any other method. In fact, I don't just want a referral from someone based on his or her reputation or someone knowing someone. I prefer referrals to people from people that have actually done business with them. So they can personally vouch for them how they are in the business environment. And one of the best ways to get referrals is through your commercial real estate broker. They're kind of like a gateway into a market, not only for deals, but also for people. So ask them for professionals they really like and with whom they've done a lot of business with. In general, really ask everyone you speak to for a referral. If you're speaking to a broker, ask for a referral to a property manager. If you're speaking to a property manager, ask for a referral to an insurance agent and so on. So I recommend that you track your activity as always in a spreadsheet using these columns. Name and contact information, then the total a type of team member, property manager, mortgage broker, so you can quickly sort by team member type. Who referred you to that person? The activity log that includes a date with any kind of notes on a conversation or the email. Now, if you're looking for a little bit more help on your journey to financial freedom with real estate investing, if you're looking for some education, some resources, we have other resources that can really help you. So if you're interested in investing in your education and really get deep and start your journey, then book a call with us. It's at themichaelblank.com forward slash call. We'd love to talk about you, about having different resources and making you successful on 
on your journey to financial freedom. The most important member of your team to recruit as soon as possible. Now, the property manager is by far the most important member of your team to recruit long before you have a first deal on your contract. He or she can help you during the due diligence process with things like rental comps, vacancy rates, and inspections. So they're critical even before you have a deal under contract to close that deal. Now you want to avoid the situation at all costs. You find a nice 21 unit with good upside, you get a letter of intent signed, and let's say you even succeed in getting some money raised. And then it occurs to you that maybe you should have a coach or mentor review the deal with you. And he asks you questions like, well, how do you know that the rents are $100 under market? Or why do you think you can charge back utilities to the tenants? You tell them that you checked the rents online. They were $100 higher than the current rents. Oh, and you weren't sure about the second question. Well, doing an armchair rental analysis, even if you're using an excellent tool like rentometer.com, for example, is not enough at this stage in the game. You either need to do your own rental analysis by calling or sometimes visiting apartment complex or better yet, in addition to, you need to rely on your property manager because they know the area, they know the rents, they can even help you with repairs. So if you don't have a property manager on board who's willing to help you at this stage, you're flying blind, right? especially if you're investing out of area that you're not familiar with. So the solution is to find at least one property manager long before you put a property under contract, right? Someone you can call on if you get close to getting a deal. Property manager can really help you at this stage by driving by the property, for example, and giving you a visual. How do they they like it how they like the neighborhood what do the repairs look like they can advise you on rents or they can advise you on common practices like charging back rents for example or other rules of thumbs around expenses for that area things of that nature things that, that you can't do you don't have the expertise to do or maybe you don't have the capability of hopping on a plane right then and there so you don't want to skip this step because this way you're gonna be able to hit the ground running as soon as you get close to getting a deal on a contract call your proper manager and now be much more confident in your analysis the second most important team member the second most important team member to have on your team before you put a proper on a contract is one or more commercial real estate mortgage brokers, lenders, right? And this is critical as we talked about before because you need to understand the lender's loan terms and underwriting criteria. I mean, just imagine this. You put a deal on a contract, you know, and you assume a down payment of 20% and then you later find out that you'll need 30% or that you don't personally qualify for the loan. You're gonna need a partner, right? That would be useful information. Or maybe that the lender requires a six month reserve that you didn't count on and now you need to raise more money. Now, sometimes ignorance is bliss. In this case, these surprises can cost you a deal. So the lesson learned is this, clearly understand the terms of the loan and how the lender will underwrite the deal. And to underwrite, of course, is a fancy term that refers to how the lender will look at the deal and underwrite it and analyze it themselves and what they require of you and your sponsors. This is really, really important that you understand your lender's underwriting criteria and make sure that you network with one or more of these brokers and lenders before you start making offers because it helps to have one or more and everything. At this point in the teaching, I typically get at least one of three questions or maybe all three of them. Number one, how many deals do I need to look at to get one? Well, as I said before, deals aren't just gonna fall into your lap. They never have and they probably never will. And many people think that if they make a few offers, they will get a deal. Experience does not validate this. I mean, I see more like 100 to 10 to one ratio. Every 100 deals you analyze, you'll submit maybe an LOI for 10, a letter of intent, and end up closing on one deal. This means that if you're analyzing two deals per week, it would take you about a year to get a deal. So if you want your first deal quickly or quicker, then map out the number of deals you need to analyze each week and then execute. The other question I get is how much time do I need to commit to being successful? Let me start by saying everyone I know who became a full-time investor got started when they had a full-time job. So practically speaking, if you can cover out five to 10 hours per week, you will be successful. Now that might be an hour in the morning or evening to analyze deals, another hour during the day to make phone calls. You know, we find time for things that we want or like and that we feel are important. And if you're not making time, then maybe you don't want financial freedom. It's pretty much simple as that. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Just ask yourself what you want, what's important to you. And then I guarantee you will find the time to spend on doing those things. The third question I get often is how do I continue to take action? We talked about a consistency a lot. Is it possible that you're not on track because you're too busy? You know, you don't know where to start. You're overwhelmed by the whole idea. Then might I suggest you start taking tiny action, not massive action, right? Well, this is wildly talk. It really works for like nobody, okay? And versus tiny actions doing something very small each and every day over longer periods of time and then produces massive results. Now, could you carve out an extra 30 minutes per day to dedicate to real estate? Could you buy maybe a notebook and write down the three things you should do next and then do those three things? I guarantee you, if you do those two things, notebook and write the next three things down, you'll be amazed at how far you will have come. Let me tell you a story to illustrate what this might look like. Sam and Frank. 
Sam and Frank dream of financial freedom through real estate. They're both about the same age and have a similar house, families, time, and economic resources. One evening, they attend their first real estate club meeting. They quickly become convinced that investing in apartment buildings by raising money is the way to achieve their financial goals and quit their jobs in the next one to three years. Awesome. After 12 months, neither of them have a deal or any money raised. On the surface, it looks like neither of them have made any progress whatsoever. So it seems remarkable when six months after that, Sam does his first deal, a small 15 unit building about a three hour drive from his house. He was barely able to raise the $100,000 he needed to buy the building. And it looked a little dicey a week or so before closing because one of the investors pulled out at the last minute. But nine months after that, Sam closed on a 56 unit deal, which required $750,000 in investor capital close and overnight success. Frank still has a good job he doesn't like very much, but he's comfortable. He attended several more boot camps and even signed up with a coach. But after 18 months, he still hasn't done his first deal or has raised any money. Why? Because he never took action. And I'm not talking about massive action. I'm talking about tiny action. Here's what I mean. After attending the real estate club meeting, Sam decided that he needed to make time for his real estate investment goals. So he decided he would watch 30 minutes less TV before he went to bed and listen to a real estate podcast or read a book on the subject instead. Frank did not make a change to his leisure time. After another month, Sam watched another 30 minutes less TV. And after another month, he found he had no interest in watching TV at all. Instead, he was voraciously consuming all he could about real estate. Sam was offered promotion at work and was thrilled, but he thought about it and decided that the extra responsibility would give him less time to learn about real estate, so he declined. Frank too was offered a promotion and is now head of his department. But he works 10 hours a day, takes work home, and travels two to three times a month. Sam bought a notebook and wrote down the next three things he needed to do. They were normally simple things like read 10 pages of this book, or call a friend and tell him about my real estate investing, or attend a real estate meetup next week. Small things, easy things. Things that anyone could do without trying very hard or making any big sacrifices. Just three things. And then he would cross them off and add three new ones. After six long months of doing this every day, Sam looked up and was surprised at the progress he had made. Brokers were sending him deals. He had spoken with about a dozen potential investors. He had analyzed close to 25 deals and made a dozen offers. But he was frustrated that he didn't have a deal and hadn't raised any money yet. But Frank wasn't any better off at this point. He didn't have a deal either. But he also wasn't tracking his next three to-dos in a notebook. The whole thing overwhelmed and he didn't know where to start. Now, what about you? Are you more like Sam or maybe a little bit more like Frank? How are you doing with your goals for this year? The launch step is all about consistent activity to build the habits of analyzing deals and of course making offers and meeting with investors and building your team. It's not about outcome. It's really more about quantity over quality. This means that you might be analyzing a deal you won't, you already know won't work. That's okay. Analyze it and make an offer anyway. You might be talking with a friend who you know doesn't have any money to invest. That's okay. Use it as an opportunity to practice. Now, if you tend towards analysis paralysis, it's time to stop reading another book or attending another seminar. It's time to take action. Even if you're a perfectionist, then this step might be a challenge for you because you're trying to have it all your ducks in a row before you call the first broker. I need a website. I need business cards. I need something, something, something. And you never actually pick up the phone. And this is what you want to avoid. You don't need perfection. What you need is action. Don't overthink it. Just do it. Take tiny action each and every day. Remember, just do it. And also hit that subscribe button and notification bell now so you don't miss any more videos about financial freedom with real estate investing. Let me know your thoughts or questions in the comments below and I'm gonna see you in the next video.